Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show. We're delighted to have you along for a Thursday episode. Multitask. Multitask. You're the king of it. Uh, How's everybody doing? Good. Great. Uh, great. We are in uh, great cities like Angels Camp, California, White River State Park, Indianapolis, Indiana, Hampton, New Hampshire, Uncasville, Connecticut, Port Chester, New York, and Hoi An, Vietnam. I'm pretty sure Monday through Thursday I've hit every single uh, I think you have. Every day. Yeah. Kind of a thing for me. I was trying to do that this week because you take the time to put them together. I should take the time to put them on the show. That's the way it should go. Uh, we've got our talking head. What? <laughs> it was a little John Teshi. <laughs> Oh, uh, by the way, it's going to be John Squish, and I don't want to necessarily call it obviousness for your life. Yeah. I have to come up with something else. Okay. And then once we figure out what to name it, I will come in there, and we'll have to find some elements, and let's shoot for next week. I love it. Uh, I for doing love that John Squish. Because I'd love to do that, and uh, you know, the, uh, the intelligent for your life will be easy to come up with. That's yeah. the easy part. The tough part is to I'd like to match up the uh, elements, and it might just be... All I know is whatever song we go into should be the Little River Band. Okay, but any um, any particular Little River Band? Uh, reminiscing. Saturday night, and I was ready for the night. Would it come out right? That's better than. <laughs> That's crappy so much music better. back when I was a young DJ. You know, when I was a young DJ. You wanted yes, yeah. And you wanted Zeppelin. Mm. You wanted Bruce Springsteen. Stones. Friday night, and I decided, and I decided, I Now the uh, the guy that broke that rule a little bit was Christopher Cross. Kind of was appealed to everybody yes. for a while because of that big boom, 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 boom. Hey everybody, how you doing? <laughs> Intelligence for your life. Are you stressed out when you come home from work? Well, studies have shown from Boston College that. Sitting in traffic causes lots of stress. So, next time you're in traffic, try to take an alternate route that will make your commute easier and faster. That should help you. Is the purpose of that entire program just to make you not think? The purpose of that program is to take easy to research, yeah. simple facts that really 99% of the time are commonsensical. Yeah, that's what I mean. And spew them out uh, in a, in a in an educated way. Yeah, but there are probably and, people that think that he's like, this guy's doing the research. Oh, my wife listens all the time. <laughs> Thinks he is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Why and imagine you like how I feel. John? Um, uh, imagine, no, I have, mm -hmm. since you brought it up, us. <laughs> Um, you know, I've thought about my career. I think about my career all sure. the time. And I think about the fact that when I was in my mid-20s to my early 40s, uh -huh. uh, the bad boy, say whatever you want, controversial, uh, was fun, especially mm -hmm. when I was a younger man. It was fun to be the bad boy because yeah. the bad boy, you get to say whatever. But then you look at certain people that lasted. That mm -hmm. had staying power. Mm -hmm. And the staying power, there may be one guy who's got the real definitive staying power, and that's Howard Stern, who was because there's only room for one but, bad but even, kid. But he's not even the bad kid anymore. Not anymore. He modified, but he was for decades, decades mm -hmm. yeah. the bad kid. He grew. The other bad kids go away because people want to bully and kick. that They want to kick out the bully. But the they reason want the bad Mike, kid to go away. Do you know, let me posit this. Let me offer this. Yes. Uh, the reason that uh, I'm still doing it. By the way, I'm very happy that I'm doing it. Whatever form I'm you're doing, you're not it, the I'm bully. Though. No, you're not. I'm not a bully, but I life can is be. bullying you. <laughs> not according to uh, online. When I talked about my kid's school, big mistake. I hadn't seen. I'm sorry. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> don't even Thanks. don't honor that with a response. Well, she's she was the person I researched, and she's the one that. Said, 
Tell him my talking about how the financial difficulties when the kid goes to a private school. Prints the school, prints the tuition, puts it all oh, right up there I'm for a, the world to see, and wow. calls my kid Little Lord Fauntleroy. Let me race over there. I don't know these which details. Was a, well, I don't know if it's anywhere you'll be able to find oh, it. I think it's in a hidden location. Hidden but, Valley. A crevasse. Uh, but so I anyway. think the reason that John say, hey, Tesh, hey, please pick on me, not on my kid. When you, yeah, like, yeah. If you really want to hurt Michael hey, alone. I'll give it, no, I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a, a kudos. You wanted to hurt. You wanted to upset. You did. Congratulations, you did. Who? Anytime I see my family reference, Aww. it upsets me. Period. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them. I don't care. Tonight. Doesn't matter. I know they know it. They know it anyway because they're mean. And uh, another thing, every time I get this from somebody, and I was saying this to Pony before the show. 99.9% of the time, I will scroll on the person's profile that's mm -hmm. being really mean, yeah. and I will find a political post. Yes. Of course. Oh, every and every attack it, we've ever had against us is politically motivated. It seems motivated. like it's always that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the stats are. I'd love to break it down, but we're not going to take the time to do that. But anywho, uh, by the way, got the results from that guy that worked at my kid's school. Yes. Uh, resigned. Like a two-sentence update. From the head honcho. Mm. Uh, and let me just say, because I won't say, I'm not the guy to go into the office. I'm not the guy to call the teacher. Right. I'm not the guy to, I'm not, to, I'm not going to do that, but I have this. And so mm -hmm. uh, just a message from me to the powers of be. Love everything about it. Love the experience. Love the way we're being treated. As far as this particular situation with the email from uh, yesterday uh, and the day before, uh, let me just say, not. Thick enough. Mm. Cut that Thank up you. and send it over. Yeah, Pony, I'll get you the address. Really? Mm. Wow! Just stunningly like. Uh, well, to me, hoping it'll go me, away. Yeah, the vagueness of the initial email, hoping that yep. they wouldn't have to pursue it. Yeah, and then it broke. But it, but it might just go away. I don't know. Not gonna gonna. I've had my moment. My 72, 48 hours of mm -hmm. uh, dealing with this. But, you know, if you're going to please throw the mud, throw all the hatred, all the venom, fat, old, saggy, George Washington teeth, please just do whatever you Me, 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 me. All right? And I know if it makes you feel good picking about, that's what people have said all the time about uh, public figures. Keep the kids out of it. Yeah, you know, unless I you're agree. putting, you know, and I put my kid on the show, so I guess maybe also it comes with no, the but all, no, but when they think private school was free, you got to pay well, something, I, people. I, I, it's America, you know. You know, uh, you know, the fact is, it's true. Yeah, and the fact is, what that number you printed was true, and that's why. Yeah, we're, the, we're all doing struggle. our best. Yeah, the struggle is you know? real. So there, there it is. They had also sixty four. They don't have state I, taxes. What do you I, expect their schools to be? The rubble. <laughs> Rubble? Rubble. 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 Oh, okay. They're not the best <laughs> schools. Uh, but anywho, it gets right, uh, frustrating. It really does. I didn't even Here, Mike, this will this will change your mind. This will change your mood. What's the running time on the show? Right now we're at eight minutes and twenty-three seconds. Glorious. Do you have any intelligence for us? <laughs> Studies have shown that uh, people love their children. <laughs> The vast majority of Americans, according to a research study from Fresno State University, says moms and dads, by and large, in the United States, love their children. Like any other type of study, there are exceptions to the rule, but most people love their kids. This is obviousness for your life. My name is John Squish. My hair is blonde, even though I'm 73 years old. Uh, I love it. That's going to be like God, a full summer bit. Yeah. I would love to have a timer on oh, this show Mike, that I could start late, Yes, like when I forget and catch up. The you Therm know. Pro does not offer that. No, I'm the sorry. The Therm Pro is ridiculous. It's, it's something you, you time cookies, baby. What, what about it's reliable and accurate? What about using Alexa? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I don't have an Alexa speaker in here. Yeah, we can send you a dot. Oh, a dot I don't is want good. A dot. I don't want to add added technology like that. Not, not, not the. Uh, like, by the way, the cutest thing my kid does. And here we go. Now I'll talk about my kid. That's okay. The cutest thing he does at night. Uh, Alexa, turn on thunder sounds. And he Aww. listens. He goes to sleep with uh, thunder. Because he needs the chaos and to be relaxed. That's so mean. You. That is. You so would mean. think that a, a child of his age that Fire has survived as many hurt. Mike. Huh? 
a child that has survived as many hurricanes as him would not find that <laughs> as relaxing. As many, yeah, all 50 of them, right? <laughs> well, emotional hurricanes. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> Hurricane. You haven't been to Mrs. O'Mara's new location. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so do you want the deep fish over there? Do you want the deep fish over there? Isn't it interesting that he picked thunderstorms? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and we uh, we're waiting for him down here. Dry, dry, dry. We're waiting. It's right now. We're at the beginning of the rainy season down here, and we are waiting for him because lakes need to fill up. Uh, fire danger has to go down. Little mm. spot fires all over the place because oh, it no. is tinder dry now. Jeez. Tinder dry. Has it reduced and the... Uh... Let me know when it's uh, about 1-5, Rob, so I can bring our guest in. I want to make sure we don't forget our guest. We do occasionally do that. You but, want uh, one... Yeah. What do you mean 1-5? 15? 15. Okay, very good. Yes. Just checking. There you go, magna cum laude. Uh, okay, well, 1-5. You didn't just fall off the... What else could it be? Up. It could be anything. I want to be specific. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. One and five. We're waiting for the option. What? Okay, it could be 11 minutes 50. What? It could be a minute 50 from now. I don't know. <laughs> the last thing I want to do is give you information that's not the information you requested. One, it's, five. One, 11 five. 50. Yeah. Uh, real quick, before we bring our guest in here, I do want to discuss, uh, Polly. I love you, uh, and I actually want to confess that I... Uh, based my viewing last night on a recommendation from you. And, Polly, I don't want to offend you because I know you loved it and you talked about how wonderful he loves and movies. it was. He loves movies. Uh, a Man Called Otto might be the worst piece of garbage that I've ever seen Tom Hanks in. I am sorry, Polly. I'm very, very sorry. Damn, Perhaps man. it's my black soul that, uh, you know, is just tainted. Maybe it was the mood I was in, particularly because of the uh, goings-on of the evening. Maybe it was, but... Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can't make cutesy cutesy about certain subjects, and I hate. I said it earlier. Mm -hmm. Trying to be cute. Oh, curmudgeonly man, angry man, ha sad that his wife. I'll give you the synopsis. Please, all right? okay. Angry man retired from his job. Sad that his wife is no longer here. Nothing worth living. Wants Did she to get leave rid him? But uh, no, she died. Oh. oh. Wants to end his life. Yeah, different ways. You know. Always, amazingly, every time he tries to do it, crazy things happen where he doesn't go through with it. Oh. That's it. I said to my wife, I said, that's three. If there's a fourth, I'm out. And I meant it. Yeah. I said, if there's a fourth, I'm out. Well, I think there was a fifth and maybe even a sixth. All right? the thing Just that, like the plumber show. I remember when it came out, the movie came out, and how they sort of marketed it. Uh, it was Tom Hanks, Sheldon Hanks, uh, Robbie Hanks, oh, Rita all Wilson, it. executive producer. They all marketed it as it was always about a cranky guy who met a young family and that changed his life. A cute, Never, a uh, cute, a my, little cute young family. So cute. Everybody's so cute. Talking to one of our editors here at the village, mm -hmm. Kelsey, she says, they never mentioned what he was really trying to do. Suicide. Yes. It's a it's, movie about suicide. And I, I don't said, care if I'm a spoiler. That's, that's it. You know in the first dark. five minutes. Yeah, but oh. I mean, it's so dark. and it's Oh, they have a warning at the beginning. These show signs, uh, show oh. uh, 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 depictions of suicide that you know, some viewers may find disturbing. Well, I suppose if there's a family member <laughs> that has gotten the deed done successfully. I, By the way, I didn't stay to the end, so I didn't know how it cutesy ends. But Happy ending. He something. figures it out, Mike. I mean, really, Gross. four, four different things. Yeah. Enough. I don't want to give what. What's that? I said it, enough. Like I, I don't want to see Tom Hanks trying to off himself. But it's just so. Well, Mike, you you're you're, you're, you're biting first, your tongue about something. What? No, first five minutes, you know he's going to get interrupted because how could they have a movie? So it's Tom Hanks. You're not going to kill off Tom Hanks at the beginning of the movie. So there's your credibility right there. There's Certain a, stars are so powerful that you can't. Do that. You know it's not going to happen. I saw a clip of him going through a hardware store checkout line with a length of rope. Yeah. Is that- is Very that, specific. Is that wacky at all? Oh, What's God. his next big movie coming out? Who knows? No, he has a, he's promoting a book right now. A book. Yeah. His book where he says, sometimes on set, he's not always charming. Castaway was a <laughs> masterpiece, yes. in my humble opinion. It was a- masterpiece look. the effort put forward by tom hanks to get ready for that role and to change the, his body composition for that yes. role was just 
magnificent. Also, the plane crash party. scene in Castaway was uh, <laughs> shut up for a second. It was yeah, good in on. that as well. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> there we go. All right, you you kill. Oh, that's not working either. How exciting is that? Well, that's Mike, I had nice. to jump in because we're at one five. Okay, well then, just give me a second. What do you mean yeah. by one five? <laughs> I mean, shut the fuck up, Oscar. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're back. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I found it. There it is. All right. I'm All right. Sorry. I'm having a tough time. Bachelor Party, Mike, is an excellent movie. Probably his tour de force. I'm looking for the Rotten Tomatoes on auto. I think that uh, Bachelor Party also features Adrian Zmed, does it not? I have no idea. He's know. a wonderful Everything, actor. Everything's messed up on my board. It's messed up. Yeah, it is. Still is your volume up? That'll that'll definitely no, throw no. a monkey wrench into it. Uh, let's bring in our guest. I'm sorry. I'm messing up the show. So it's fine, right. Mike. Let's bring on our talking head. Uh, Steve Kelsey, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Steve Kelsey of Chico, California. Uh-oh. Uh, he's quite a guy. He is our first return talking head. There's a reason for this, Mike. You're going to like this. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, perhaps you remember that Steve divorced and remarried his ex-wife uh, or that his mom dated Max Bear Jr. I saw a clip of Max Bear Jr. the other day. Difficult dude. Oh, Really God. angry man. Yes. Really angry man. Mm. Or that a train full of bombs exploded <laughs> a quarter mile from his home. But today, Steve is here to discuss <laughs> panning for gold. Uh, Steve and his father <laughs> were gold panning uh, hobbyists in uh, Placker County. It's Placker, right, Steve? Is it Placker County? Placer. Placer. Okay, Placer County. That's what I said. Near Sacramento. <laughs> they enjoyed some uh, finds in the American River, but Steve has friends that were much more successful. Steve is here to uh, tell us about panning strategies, locations, processing, and, of course, using a sluice box. <laughs> Mama's got a sluice box. Daddy never sleeps at night. Uh, he describes the feeling of gold discovery as being like a big casino hit. I would imagine it would be, and I would love to, to try it, uh, but I feel I might uh, be past my prime for that type of activity. Intrigued, you should be now here with a return engagement. First one ever? Yes, first repeat after. And uh, because Steve reached out to talk about panning for gold. Yes. Uh, that's a uh, one. <laughs> a wonderful <laughs> like the background scene. a wonderful backdrop of you making love to Jim Amato in New Orleans which was uh, Sweet truly truly love. truly special uh that'll be a beautiful uh that'll be a beautiful pick to uh put up when uh, either one of you whoever dies first i think that'll be well mike uh, there's going to be a movie that really they're making special. it's called a man called steve and <laughs> no, Steve is like, uh, look at him. He looks like, like looks like Ron Perlman, for God's sake. He'll be around. Yeah, he does. That's a yeah. good call. Uh, but Jim Amato does not. Not so sure. So if you're if about the pool Amato. begins on that one. Uh, anywho, <laughs> Steve, how are you? <laughs> nice to have you with us. How are you? you do, do you do a podcast? No, I don't. Okay, I thought so. Just yours. You, you do. Yeah, just mine. Thank you. I appreciate Exclusive. that. Exclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously you, uh, I think I bumped into you. I think I said hello when uh, you were in uh, the Big Easy, or did I not? Did I get a chance to say hi personally? No, I didn't get, a, I didn't get to talk to you. I talked to, to Oscar and Rob, but I yeah. uh, didn't get a chance to visit with you. I had the well, pleasure of a, having dinner with Steve and his wife and a handful of other listeners. Oh, that's right. You went yeah, out yeah. on uh, uh was Friday, Thursday, 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 Thursday night. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and really, thanks to everybody. Uh, we had such a great yes. time in New Orleans, and it was just uh, super fun. And the venue was fun, uh, even though Steve, I thought they uh, they were rather abrupt uh, asking us to clear the venue at uh, at the conclusion of our show. I'm not sure what they had that a was shimmy. All about. They had a well, what? It, it kind of was like the end of Mardi Gras when the cops start pushing the street. To, yeah. to flush people out. It's kind of what it felt like. They they, they locked arms and, and uh, Frog marched just out of there. <laughs> yeah, it was very intense. Now, listen, I've uh, been in clubs my whole life, and I worked in clubs. So I was there for Last Call many times. Then I had my own joint, and believe me, it's never pretty. Uh, but, you know, this was not late, late. This was a little late, but it wasn't super late. But it was just like, all right. Drink them up. Let's yep. get out of here. Come on. Man, at O'Mara's, it used to be like herding cats. 
It really was. So the point I was trying to make was, all right, drink him up. I'm going. What's your hurry? I think he's going to go. I'm going. So, uh, Steve, welcome back uh, to the show from uh, Chico. Don't be discouraged. We're happy to have you here, <laughs> and uh, it's great to have you on the show. Um, it seems that panning for gold, these television shows are everywhere, and, of course, the gold rush state. Uh, the Golden State is where panning for gold and, uh, you know, prospecting for gold. And it's, Mike, a it's a resurgence thing. because of all the weather in California has removed layers of earth and dirt and all of that that's exposed new worse stuff. From what I heard yeah. on the news yesterday, Steve, are you guys, uh, before we get to the panning for gold, are you concerned about the, uh, for those of you that might not know, the meteorological situation in California for 100 years, they had a terrible drought and uh, lakes dried up and they found dead bodies. And uh, then uh, most recently this past season, they had an amazing snowfall mm -hmm. in the mountains. And, uh, and now the snowfall is going to result in what they say will be an inordinate amount of water uh, filling these reservoirs. Uh, multiple times over. Are you concerned about the prospect of uh, flooding? Are people out there getting ready for that and preparing for that? What's the status of things in Cali right now? No, we've got uh, almost twice as much snowpack as we normally do because right. we had an actual winter this year. Normally, it's just T-shirt and shorts and flip-flops all winter during the drought. And so we had a real winter with a lot of rain, a lot of snow. Um, the, the lakes are all pretty full, but they've got the overflow, the spillways going. So they're still letting water out as fast as they need to. Um, but it never say never, but we're not really in a floodplain. So I'm okay. not real worried about it. All right. Yeah. It, uh, but I heard one, you know, one warm spell now will be, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the question now is like making sure that it doesn't, uh, you know, you don't have an overwhelming early heat wave, which in that part of the world is, mm. you know, unfortunately going to happen. It's been in the high 90s. Um, oh, wow. All week. Okay. So yeah, it was wow. 96 two days ago. Oh, wow. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. So we're, we're I'm swimming already. My pool's up to 88 degrees. It's it's sweet. Lovely. Atta boy, Stevie. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's get to this panning for gold. Uh, yeah. Rob said with the uh, way things have gone geographically out there in California, a lot of people are doing this again, and you have done it. How long have you been uh, panning for gold? I haven't done it in a long time, but my dad and I used to do it. Um, and it was just a, a little side hobby, something fun to do together. Um, and so we lived out there in Sacramento where Sutter's Mill and in Auburn uh, near Placerville. It was really the heart of the gold rush um, back in the day. In fact, even just south of us, about 20 miles, is Oroville. And when they built the Oroville Dam, um, I've heard people telling stories, with, is there, if you've got this ground cut out, and they're seeing these huge veins of gold going through the rock, and they're not allowed to touch it. Uh, and they end up pouring concrete over the top of it to make the dam. But um, wow, you so know, there was a really uh... gold country here. There was a small city, uh, not in California, it was outside of Reno, Nevada, called Oralville. But mm, that yes. wasn't a real city. That was just a collection of uh, <laughs> small yeah. houses. Shopping district, was wasn't bad, it? Bad joke. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so the, you're, you're not able to touch it because it's protected? Is that why? Well, I, that was the rule, and that's what they told them. They said, if you see gold, you can't take it or you're, you're going to get fired. But uh, anyhow, so that was... They poured a lot of concrete over a lot of gold back when they built the dam in, in Oroville. Really? So, okay. Yeah. So now it's still, but the fact that there is, there are massive veins of gold over the rock out there would indicate that the water areas, the, uh, you know, the banks, the, the rivers, the streams, they'd have it in there too, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, uh, outside of Sacramento is a town called Folsom. And if to this day, great prison, <laughs> great prison, but it gives me the blues. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. I hear that train a coming. <laughs> coming around the bend. Yes. Yes. It's a beautiful, so the, uh, balsam. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the, along the sides of the road are just piles of river rock that are left over from when they did all the hydraulic mining, just blasting it with high pressure water. 
and washing all that dirt away. And then they were catching it further down to where they put it through a sluice box or they would pan it out or, or but that was the, the way they, they accessed all that um, soil was through those, by hosing off that river rock, hydraulic mining. Maybe so, it's above your pay grade, but I'm just curious, is there a reason geographically that California has so much gold and other places in the country don't? I have no idea. Hmm. It just always has been. Yeah, yeah. We're I think it has something state, to do with te tectonic plates. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. This show has now, <laughs> based on Mr. Spiewak's question, <laughs> stopped. Oh, I might have touched the brake, but Oscar pumped it. He did afterwards. <laughs> tectonic plates. Uh, we were, if you have one of those modern cars that has yes. auto hold. Yes. You brought the car to a stop, and then Oscar keyed the auto. I was hold just using my right big now. brain. Yeah, I understand. Yes. I understand. I would like to know if we please to describe a sluice box to <laughs> us, please. A sluice box is a. They come in a variety of sizes, but it's what it is. It's a, it's a trough, and water flows through it, and there are ridges in it that anything heavy like gold is going to fall and get caught in those ridges as the water passes through with the soil and so sometimes they're set up on a rocker like a like a, a children's old wooden rocker and they go back and forth and the the gold falls to the bottom and everything else washes out over the top and it's a way of rapidly uh, getting just nuggets rather than gold kind of an the, elaborate the, way of dust. panning for gold right a lot of people will take what they get out of the sluice box and pan it down it to refine it. Ooh. Hmm. But most people that are out panning are using sluice boxes and dredges and stuff like that. If you go up through the canyons uh, in the mountains, you'll see these these rafts with a with a, a generator on it, and they're pumping water. And the guys are in scuba gear, going sucking up the the bottom of the the river looking so for gold. So there are a lot of people that are putting a lot of time and effort and money into doing this. Uh, are there routinely big scores out there, or is this primarily hobby? But, I mean, if you're talking about scuba gear and rafts, some yeah, expensive, edges, yeah, some investment. Uh, is anybody – I mean, and I think that it would have to be industrial, right, because you're taking little bits of it, uh, gold flex, really, and putting it all together. Can someone – make hay doing this at all well they can it just takes a lot of time and it's a, a little bit over a long period of time you're going to get something worthwhile um but you don't ever see these fist-sized nuggets uh occasionally someone came up with one in marysville many 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 years ago um while i was alive so it's not you know ancient history God, cool but um man. they were just down to this little marysville park and the guy found a, a gold nugget the, the size of your fist that, wow. And how much would that be? I mean, I have no idea because I don't oh, know. Like a fist size nugget. And thousands would, of dollars. Thousands and thousands. It, yeah. An ounce runs of what? About $800 nowadays. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So it's fun. It's primarily uh, fun. That, but, but there are tons of people out there doing this right now, right? Yeah. And, they, and you got to be real careful because people have claims. Don't pan on their side because it gets rather heated. It's like walking into somebody's pot bro. Someone's going to take this, a shot at you. <laughs> Steve, is this like a, a singular uh, activity where, you know, I know a lot of people that go camping, but they just get either super high or super hammered with their friends when they're camping. Like, are you panning for gold and like smoking on a spliff or a blunt or, <laughs> or is it like something else that's going on out there? I, I just feel like you got to really be into it if it's just Growing that. Mary Jane. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, I guess it goes back to the, the, the feeling you get when you're gambling. You know, you're pulling the lever or pushing the button on the slot machine and you're getting bubkis, bubkis, and you're, but, but there's always hope. It's always right there. You know, it's that there. Next yeah. Look at it. I just saw it. I just saw top dollar. It was right there. <laughs> this way, it's just like I'm panning, panning, panning. It's like, oh, hello, sir. Hi, how are you, man that looks like ZZ Top? Is this your claim? I'm not. <laughs> Jesus, run for your life. Run for your lives, please. Help me. Are claims established on a map just like anything else? Yeah, yeah, you can get out of the the, uh, the county office and find out who's got what. Wow. Now, you were telling yeah. me yesterday about when you were panning with your dad that you would find flakes and little pieces of gold. 
but it required processing. And I found that very cool. What you did, because you handled your own processing, right? Right. right. Actually, we have a, a clip of a Steve biggest... doing. Hold on, Steve. We have a clip of you processing the gold with your dad. Let's listen to that. Uh... <laughs> it's like the fish. Joke, the yeah. fishing has never been better. There you go. How did you? <laughs> so you did that with your dad. Tell us about that. So, so when you're panning, <clears throat> the rule is you take uh, little lead BBs like you'd use in shotgun shells, and you throw that in the pan. And if you lose your BBs, you know that you're panning too aggressively. So as long as you had lead shot, you're going to be okay, and to, you're not going to be washing your gold away. So you're just taking, you're digging around tree stumps, you're digging around rocks or low spots, things where over time, <clears throat> excuse me, over time would uh, gold would find this little purchase and, and nest down there. So you dig that out, you dump it in your pan, take it down to the creek, you fill it with water and you just jiggle it around and slowly wash away the dirt until you get to the heavy stuff. And in most cases, what you're going to get is called black sand, mm. which is, it, that's exactly what it looks like. And you might see a little contrast of gold in there, but not very often, but you take that black sand and you collect it all up, then I'd go home and I just took a look like a, a it was a Cool Whip lid, Cool Whip tub, because it had a little trough around the outside edge. We put our black sand in that, and then you pass over it with a magnet and get all the iron out of it. Wow. So now you're what left with gold and and uh, sand or a little aggregate. Then we'd add uh, nitric acid, which eats up minerals, and so that w takes care of a lot of the of the uh, rocks and, and stuff that you didn't pick out already. And these are just really, really small bits of rock. Then um, you take a uh, mercury and you drop it in there. A little Jesus ball of mercury. Christ. Wow, <laughs> all this for black sand. I could have given you a handful of it when I went to the beach last week. There wasn't any gold in it, but you <laughs> didn't know. you well, make you made some black sand? Didn't I made you? some black sand. <laughs> yes, I did. But well, we had a lot of uh, Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> so you just swirl that that uh, mercury around there because mercury absor absorbs gold, and so you go until I didn't find goes. any. <laughs> I didn't find any mercury. Do you think I used too much mercury? Well, I'm I got to tell you, my teeth have never been wider, and I, I, my garden spent about fifty pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> oh wow! And any. Really big hits or successful hits when you were doing this with your dad? No, but during after the process, <laughs> sorry, you got that. No, 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 because this is where I got my my only real nugget was taking that mercury, and this is where it sounds like I'm making it up. But you take a potato, and you cut it in half, cut a little notch out of it. You drop that mercury in there. Then you put the two halves of the potato together, and you wrap it up in foil, and you stick it in a barbecue, and you cook that down. And the potato absorbs the the mercury, and at the end of it, you're left with a little tiny nugget. Wow! Because all the gold melts. Oh, really? And so I've got a little bottle somewhere in my office of here, gold. It's a little bottle. It has got wow. gold in it that we process down from just the finest of of gold dust. And do you do it okay. anymore, or did you just do it with your dad? Do you do it anymore? No, I I haven't done it in a long time. I still have my pan. It's out in the shed. Do you? But you've referenced so gambling uh, maybe three times on the show. Do you gamble occasionally? <laughs> Do you like to gamble? I only gamble in love. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's and right. Funny. Now I'm breaking even. <laughs> oh, well, by the way, I want to thank Zoolander for uh, uh, telling me that that guy that says uh, when the thumbs comes up just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zoo said. <laughs> <laughs> Only zoo. Zoo's fantastic with yeah. the stuff that he brings me sometimes. They go to, a, it's a guy at a casino, enters into a deal with a person that he will help you negotiate some of these uh, complicated slot machines. Oh. And you make a, a deal on what increment of money you put in. And he only, obviously, I said this uh, on yeah. the uh, yes. show the other day, he only publishes the, the winners, uh, the winners that, that are on there. And I don't know what the thumb comes up just like that. I don't know what he's trying to sell with that. But this guy's around casinos, and he finds people, and he's had a pretty good track record. He seems to know a little something about changing denominations.
That's what I I watch with that. And uh, and then Zoolander went panning for gold after that. Which was <laughs> Steve, um, anything else uh, happening out in uh, California you wanted to talk about before we uh, let you say hello to everybody again? And uh, once again, I have to compliment you on that picture of Jim Amato. It's that beautiful. Is, uh, that is striking, uh, really. Anybody you want to say hello to or anything you want to share with us before we let you go? Well, I want to thank you guys for uh, bringing back the live show. Um, after having that break between Vegas until now, um, it was absolutely therapeutic. And it's an amazing group that you have assembled. And I, I think I told you this the last time. The, the, the TMOS fan club is such a unique, wonderful group that even, you know, my wife was heading down to take care of her parents this week. She got a flat tire. It was early, she was losing the air, so she had to hop different towns to fill up her tire to get it down to Costco so she could get it replaced. And she posted it on Facebook. And darned if a TMOS or didn't see that and went over and kept her company. Um, so Noah Francis the way they are. went it's, over and no. tracked her down. Well, that's and they great. Sat and visited while she waited for her tire. That's the kind of people are in this group. Oh. And I, I love should them. I should really point out that um, th this is one of the single most satisfying parts of my career that uh, this group has formed over so many years. Uh, based on, you know, really uh, it hit overdrive with this podcast. And I have to say that uh, if you're somebody who listens to the show and you're, you know, you're looking to meet some people that, that are wonderful human beings, it is without question one of the most welcoming groups of people. Yes. And you don't have to be in Las Vegas and no. you don't have to be in California and you don't have to be in D.C. You can do this online. And then if you are so inclined to join us at one of our conclaves, it makes it uh, all the more Very special. Sweet. And, uh, you know, and really, uh, it, it's just a delight for me as well, because people like you, Steve, that, you know, that share your uh, your happiness with the show and the people that are associated with it. I'm not just saying us, but the people that listen to the show. It's a uh, it, it's remarkable for me. It really is. It makes me kind of feel yeah. like. Uh, I've done something, and uh, it's special. So it is special and super nice people that uh, do that. Uh, before we let you go, anybody you want to say hello to before you go out and pan for gold this afternoon? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be panning uh, this weekend. So, no, I just wanted to let everybody know that we have set up a, a time for the TMOS uh, Pool Party Spectacular this summer. <laughs> so we will have a, a meet and greet um out in chico so if any of the team westers want to get together and float and drink and laugh and have fun we're going to do it again this year so uh if you're interested in attending uh shoot me a private message and we'll get you all squared away otherwise we'll otherwise watch the fan yeah, page boy. pool party yes black pool sand party black Fantastic. sand in the pool jolene jolene <laughs> jolene jolene <laughs> Uh, anyway, have a great time. Thank you, Steve Kelsey. We appreciate You're that. Welcome. Keep on keeping on. Thank you for the insights about uh, panning for gold uh -huh. and the sluice box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was at American University, oh. we had uh, the fourth floor. They had a couple Stop. of sluice boxes. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> What is the matter we'll with you? Break. I don't know what's wrong today. It's <laughs> Thursday, but I, I was the same way yesterday. I don't know what's wrong. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Do you like bikes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Would you like to electrify them? Yeah. Bet you would. <laughs> Spring into outdoor adventures and do it with electric e-bikes. You can experience mm. the bike you've always wanted with amazing and affordable financing options. These fast, fun, foldable bikes are ideal for quick errands or longer journeys. They're packed with features. They have a removable battery, so you can go Just, into it's uh, wonderful. You mm -hmm. can go into a coffee shop, yeah. and you can put your battery under your arm. Or if you're uh, you know, out, Ooh. if you take your electric e-bike out to a claim that you have out in Placerville, California, to pan for gold. You don't have to worry that, you know, when you get your big nugget that you're going to go back to your electric e-bike and somebody is taking your battery out of it. <laughs> By the way, it's got an LCD display, multiple levels of pedal assist. So if you're going up that hill, you don't have to worry about stressing out about that. Electric e-bikes, perfect for everyone. Not only do they provide a thrilling ride, but they also help lower gas costs and reduce your carbon footprint. Oscar loves it. Mm. You will, too. Countless other happy riders say goodbye to parking fees. 
Embrace the freedom of riding a electric e-bike this spring. Start your next adventure with Electric E-Bikes Ready Set Spring Sale. Visit electricebikes.com to learn more and explore the new Expedition Cargo E-Bike and all of the other epic models Electric has to offer. That's L E C T R I C ebikes.com and we say thank you everybody for electric e-bikes from the four corners of the world wide web and into your digital device it's what you need to know this is the home page this is the home page and we begin today ladies and gentlemen with john depp jack depp <laughs> jack depp has uh, no further need for hollyweird uh during a press conference at con ah where is he He's in the can. No, he's in con. Uh, he You're not going the, this year? I didn't realize it was happening. You're not going? No, no. The uh, yacht is in dry dock. I understood. I understood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with that security guy at the, uh, you know, the gold brick school. <laughs> at the con film festival <laughs> yesterday, he said, quote, I don't feel boycotted by Hollywood because I don't think about Hollywood. Thank you, John. Yes. It's a strange, funny time. Where everybody would love to be able to be themselves, but they can't. He's right about that. Mm-hmm. They must fall in line with the person in front of them. If you want to live that life, I wish you the best. I'll be on the other side somewhere. Uh, but he did feel shunned before his uh, defamation trial last year. Quote, when you're asked to resign from a film you're doing because of something that is merely a function of vowels and consonants, Floating in the air, have another bottle of wine. What? Right, no, I don't blame him. Think yeah. about what okay. he's been through. Uh, yeah. Think about not just the trial, his personal life, Mike. I have no doubt that this guy's probably a raging alcoholic. Whatever. We've well, we've, there's we've, tape we've heard, of it. We've heard, we've heard of it. And, and we've it, all had our moments. And it's, it's, it's not look, it, and that doesn't excuse his behavior. Yes. But what he's been through, especially personally. Yes. If any of us had a relationship that had some, some like. Just a, a smattering of uh, ex-wife or ex-girlfriend using your marital bed as a Don's John's. Yeah. You you probably, you know, you're a little jaded. You want to get out of it. None of my wives ever did anything like that. Yet. All of my girlfriends did. Oh, okay. But that was by request. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was all a, right. It was God, the 80s. I thought he was, was going to let me get away with that Excuse one. Me. Yeah. yeah. Dave Thomas. Could you do that again? Uh, anyway, he felt boycotted. He also <laughs> joked that uh, he's had his 17th comeback, even though he hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, okay. I mean, there's a self-important factor. He, Look, I know he's in the public eye, and he's got a yap, yap, yap. And he he's going to like he's Hollywood. He's fine, right? He's going to like Hollywood when it's time to make another pirate there, movie. There's a report in what your local Fairfax rag that uh, the, 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 the Depp court battle was such a, a boon and stimulus that was un- unexpected to Fairfax County. Yeah, that they want other big cases to come to Hollywood fair. cases to yeah. come. You know? Yes, want to get a fair trial? Come here, absolutely, and you can stay with Pony. That's right, and then eat at Cafe sure. Italia. Pony, didn't you? Why do I remember you like came in contact with outside of that courthouse or something and saw everything? Did you have any contact with those people? No, no, not at all. We I, were begging I him to go report live from outside. Oh, and he didn't want to. Yeah, it was trashy. Yeah. 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 He said it was trashy. It was trashy. It was trashy, trashy. and he had a dental appointment. Yeah. All right. Uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, this is just a disturbing story. Uh, They almost met the same fate as uh, his mom, Princess Diana. At least that's what Harry's people are saying. Uh, Look, Tuesday night, Meghan received an award at a ceremony in New York. Meghan, Harry, and Meghan's mom left the ceremony about 10 p.m., got into an SUV, and drove off with a police escort. The paparazzi followed, and things got dangerous. Can you imagine? No. Really, if you lose your mom, and it's the most publicized death in world history, mm-hmm. practically, and then you go through this. Uh, yeah, they're following. Uh, it was a relentless pursuit, we're told, lasting over two hours, yeah. resulted in multiple near collisions involving other drivers on the road pedestrians and two nypd officers jesus christ there's what's wrong with people i mean really now hear hear me out mike all right because i'm gonna take team paparazzi no no we all have to make a living uh but that being said well that was team paparazzi (laughs) that was there's an entire underground unsubstantiated thread against the royals and this could be big royal working against harry and megan 
Right. And, and I am team Harry and Meghan, just for, to be clear. But they have what they say is evidence, which I have not seen yet. Okay. That says that this was a publicity stunt. Nobody ever gets stuck in traffic. I mean, nobody ever just drives around New York City for two hours just, you know, to drive around. There's too much traffic. Nobody. Okay. That, like the logic of, of, that makes sense, of being stuck in, or, or, or even swerving through traffic in New York for two hours makes zero sense. They have uh, the, the two hours. You got a point where they. It, 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 but you see, it doesn't have to be. Do they say high speed? Slow speed. Definitely slow speed. Slow speed. Sources say photographers were driving on the sidewalk, running red lights, and driving the wrong way on one way streets. Well, that's so if even if it was slow and they were doing this, it's weird. It's not the high speed thing that was it our old limo driver? (laughs) It sounds a little bit. What was his name? Richard. Good dude. Richard. Yeah, he was great. Oh my God, what a great guy. (laughs) Uh, New York City Mayor Eric Edwards even held a press conference, Oscar, Mm. and called the paparazzi reckless and irresponsible. I think the point you're making, if they were jammed up in traffic, and that could happen at 10 p.m. in New York, yeah, uh, who knows? But do you Mike, really I got think? A, I, got think? A, I got a press release here from the city of Fairfax okay, that says uh, they will not chase them down here. <laughs> That's right. There's no paparazzi. <laughs> no paparazzi in Pony, Fairfax. Pony, that would be a side hustle for you that I think would be fantastic, you know? Yeah, I and mean, again, trashy. No, think of all the celebrities that roll through Fairfax and you can well, get their picture. Well, it was picture. like Jackie Chan or somebody. He'd go out of his mind, you know? Jackie <laughs> no. Chan's coming to Fairfax Courthouse. Oh, oh there's Jackie Pony. Some there's anime... Pony right over there. Some... Watch out. Some oh, anime oh, voice actor nobody knew about. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Janet, uh, Janet Varney. Who knows? <laughs> uh, it's strange that Alec Baldwin's next movie will center around a gun tragedy. Uh, that's not strange. No. That's not strange at all. You think it's by design. Of course. He's no. all tried to. The only thing he has done since all this went down with the movie was called Rust. When the Rust yeah, movie Rust. tragedy happened, he tried to control the narrative. He couldn't. He somehow got through it. And he's going to continue to try to control the narrative. You never know about the con- you know the contracts and whether these are commitments that were made previously. You never know. The movie is called Kent State. Anybody that knows history knows that uh, the Ohio National Guard opened up on a bunch of college students, uh, you know, killing four unarmed students, one of the worst times in our history, Mm -hmm. and er er uh, injuring nine others. If you, you know, if you live in a box, you might know that famous picture of the woman uh, crouching down beside the the bloodstream Mm -hmm. body uh, of the the co-ed, and it it sucks. Alec will play Kent State President Robert White. Uh, Bob White. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's not appropriate, but I had a DJ work for me who was a beautiful music DJ when I hired him at the country station. Here's Willie Here's Willie Nelson to sing for you. I'm Bob White. Bob, you got to do a more folksy kind of uh, delivery. <laughs> by the way. Oh, by the way. Uh, I love There's a guy, I don't know his name. I, damn it, I should have remembered the name. I was trying to memorize the name. Listening to uh, some stand up on my way and the guy does a bit on tornadoes. Yeah, I think his last name is Stacy. I think he's a comedian, uh, like Lane Stacy or Lane Dacy or something. Uh-huh. Like that. And he does a bit on tornadoes and trailers that is the single funniest tornado bit I have ever heard. If I can find it, I will play it on the show today. Uh, anyway, the movie uh, inspired the classic Crosby, Stills, and Nash Young uh, Ohio song. You know, Here's Crosby, Forget Stills, and Nash Ohio. to sing yes. for you. Here they are. Stacy Taylor? No, no, no. Stacy, Daisy, whatever. Uh, he's like uh, one of the, he, he goes on one of those Larry the Cable Guy tours. Oh, gotcha. country. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Oscar Mayer just announced Ooh. that they're changing the name from the Wiener Mobile to the Frank Mobile. And no, it's not because people now have a problem with the word Wiener. It's a marketing thing. The change is meant to promote a new recipe. Uh, which they're rolling out this summer. The new formula for their all-beef franks will feature a more balanced flavor profile and iconic beefy taste. Well, they're finally making them taste like Hebrew National. Is that what they're trying uh, to do? Good luck, because they, those are suck hot dogs. Hot, Oscar Mayer last <laughs> changed its recipe in 2017. The hot dog packaging will be updated as well, uh, but the actual Wienermobile slash Frankmobile will not be changed. It'll still be a hot dog. Hot dog. Uh, 
but uh, it has some decals along the side that they're. Changing. They should contact. They should contact Donny Osmond for the launch. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's ancient history. But uh, it's still that, a great right? story. Yeah, still so cool. Show. Yeah. Uh, I got to ride in the Wiener Mobile. What's Donny it Osmond like inside? Did. Yeah, it's uh, like a limousine with a long row seat. Nice. Oh, okay. And a window that Donny Osmond was uh, forced to hang out with and say, "I'm Donny Osmond. Don't you wish you were me?" I still love that. Very, very It is exciting. a great story. <laughs> uh, spokesman is being coy about it. They say uh, they're trying out the name to see if it cuts the muster. Ah! Yes. Did you enjoy uh, the uh, hot dog joke on <laughs> on Ted Lasso this week? I Have didn't you watched see the... Ted Lasso this week. I haven't watched There is it a yet. great, great hot dog joke that you will enjoy. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. I just got done with Succession. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Shiv. <laughs> She's a piece uh, of work, no? Is it an accident? She's named after a prison cutting tool? Ooh. Ooh. Don't think so. Uh, here's a new scam to know something about that's been making the rounds on FB. Uh, it might be one of the meanest scams ever. If a friend DMs you and says someone you know just died, don't click the link. Mm. I think I've gotten this. I have. I think I've been on the receiving end. Uh, it usually says something like, look who died in an accident. I think you know him. So sorry. Then it's followed by a few crying emojis and a link that uh, might look legit, but it's not. Uh, it's a phishing scam to steal your info. For example, it might send you a page that asks you to log into Facebook again, but you're actually giving that info to a scammer. It's mean because it preys on our emotions. Uh, we're more likely to panic and click the link without thinking. If you get a message like that on social, let your friend know they've been hacked. But chances are they already know because all of their friends got it. So there is that. I got that message from Carrie. And when I clicked the link, it was my Facebook page. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that was just wishful thinking on her. Part. I don't That's know. It was. And now a little something, something. And, of course, remember, when it comes to comedy, quantity is better than yes. quality. Oh, okay. Yes. And that's yes. why we Good have tease. three. Three. Count them. Three for you today. Yes. A woman with 20-pound breasts uh, who was kicked off a flight claims she was chucked off the plane because of her explicit look and says the experience left her feeling dehumanized mm. Mm. mary magdalene really Is that a real that's name? your name <laughs> that's your real name must be a stage name could be uh she's 25 she says flight attendants told her she'd been uh, removed from the plane because she had been wearing headphones and hadn't been listening to instructions from the cabin crew the model saw a picture of her i don't know who she's modeling for uh but she will not be in mike o'mara illustrated this maybe month. she's a hand model uh, she'd been wearing leggings and a sport bra at the time of the incident, and uh, she doesn't believe this was the true reason. She reckons a small-chested girl would have been treated quite differently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mary has reportedly splashed out more than $150,000 worth of plastic surgery procedures, including breast enhancements and a Brazilian butt lift. Mm. The weird thing is that uh, after the plane took off, they ran out of coffee creamer. <laughs> the plane was uh, just a little bit late for its final destination. Really? Yes. Where was that? Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> the woman was also not wearing a, a seatbelt because she told flight attendants that she was already strapped in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Yeah, they got better. the good one was the first one, I think. Well, I think you did a proper comedy yeah, pyramid. Yeah, good to go. Yeah. Thank you. No. Thank you very much. I'm here all week. Uh, we'll come back with something on the Michael Mara show. Hey, when you want to look and feel your absolute best, there's only one place to go, people. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Right now at Dermglow Skin, they have a massive sale with 23 incredible items up for grabs. Dermglow ships everywhere and they offer afterpay. Think of Dermglow for all your gift giving needs, e-gift cards, luxurious body and skincare products, virtual skin consultations, and indulgent pampering facials. Something for everyone. And it's never too early to start planning for Father's Day. Show your dad some love with Mike's big package. Yeah. Or Little Both available at discounted prices right now. Don't miss out on these amazing deals. Visit DermGlowSkin.com to shop for incredible offers that will make anyone's day, including yours. DermGlow, your path to radiant beauty. Visit DermGlowSkin.com and do it. Excuse me, God. 
man, I got hiccups. I do it today. Please. <laughs> Dermal oh, could fix your hiccups, Mike. Oh, no, it can't. Yeah, you just uh, rub it on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just inside I, your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, we have a new addition to the uh, crew at Podville Media in Washington, D.C. Yes. Uh, yeah. He came in just the other day to say hello. Don't remember whether it was on the air or off the air. Off but, there. Uh, off there. Off off Mac. Air. Hey, Mac's here. Orange Mac. Mac. Mike McIntosh. Now, the last I checked. Uh, we had taken a kid that used to lie to his parents and uh, not go to community college and uh, play video games in the parking yeah. lot of a grocery store to uh, being a an assistant manager to the assistant manager at a uh, tech uh, retail outlet. And, and now he got his own place. Remember, we got a tour of his uh, condo. Had his own condo. Mm -hmm. And then the last time we spoke with Mike McIntosh on this show, I detected some cracks in the foundation as he was beginning to say he was getting burned out yes. at his place of employment. And then, lo and behold, bingo, Oscar informs me that uh, he's done it again on a Santana reclamation project. Yes. He has hired Mac part-time. All the broken people, Mike. All the broken people end up All here. The broken well, this is people. what's great. Yes. Is, uh, <laughs> this is a, always a stamp of approval when we say they're broken prior to this announcement. Um, Mac will, today, he will get his full-time offer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, let me, uh, where's the ta-da? Where's that? Oh, here it is. So okay, if he's listening. Absolutely. He's, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's that not ta-da. That Although that is. We are the worst friends. Mike, that is quite no, likely sorry, his this, reaction. This is go, the one I got. Yes. Mac. Actually, can we go back to the nausea sound for a second? And we can absolutely. sort of. We, Mac, we have uh, been pleased with your your work up to this point. We'd like I to offer you. I think please your, is. is Okay, Mac, we've been satisfied <laughs> with your uh, with your uh, employment thus far, and we'd like to offer you full time status. <laughs> he gets excited. My new favorite set. I know yeah. I overused it. Well, he's it. a sickly Thank boy. He is. Yes, he is. A sickly Absolutely. boy. Yes. Right. When he gets off the elevator, this oh, is the sound you hear as yes. he's walking away. <laughs> so, when did you? Uh, when did this all go down? This is very exciting. Well, uh, you know, I, all kidding aside, we have a soft spot for um, TM West alumni. Sure. And what's also great about, think about the Dan O'Briens of the world that we've hired up, right? Mm -hmm. And Dan is making incredible strides here at Podville. Um, Yesterday I had a few bites of cake. <laughs> and now- So is Pony Boy, right? Isn't yeah, that right, Well, Pony, Pony Boy? Boy was brought up to the ranks, uh, but he went the traditional route uh, where he- How come he's not speaking? Well, it's up to him. I, well, I know, Oscar was explaining to me. Yeah, I, I was a big Owen Dukes intern. And then I worked for WJFK, and I, I worked for this show for a little while, and then the station flip formats. Yeah. All right. But and when Max we found now. someone who could tell a story like that, we yeah. said we've got to have him. <laughs> That's fantastic, isn't it? I love that story. Yes. Uh, so, Oscar, uh, when did this all so, go down? I'll, I'll give you the... The true story. Oh, good. He uh, reached out to me roughly eight months ago, and he said, look, I've hit uh, the ceiling. What at, are you wearing? At Micro Center. Um, and probably doesn't want me saying the place, but I think we all know. Yeah. And he goes, there's no more upward momentum in my career. I'd love to see if there's an opportunity at Podville. Right. And I said, oh, my God, like, this kid has grown up. This is, if, again, if you recall, he's, uh, you know, um, a community college dropout. What is he? Forty now? Uh, no, he's 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 a, he's a kid. But he was he basically fleeced his grandparents for tuition right. for roughly two semesters. Um, and gamed in his car. A, a younger brother of a tennis pro, um, <laughs> as we all as we recall. I do love that. Yeah, <laughs> I really do. But he's really grown up a lot. And I said, Mac, look, I'd love to have you. Come on by. Let, I want to show you the lay of the land. This is eight months ago. Right. So okay. Mac, Mac comes up. I don't think he's ever been into the big city proper. He's always <laughs> been like a sub suburban guy. Yeah. And he's like, oh, like this is a real building. That's the first thing he tells me. What? And I said. As opposed to what? I said, what do yeah. you think we worked in? Uh, like a, an outhouse? <laughs> I think he's used to the one level, um, I guess, medical complexes that are in Northern Virginia. And remember, he started in a living room with us. Like, so, if, we're, if we're not in a strip mall, he doesn't think it's real. Yeah. Okay. So, so he comes into the city. I think he's only seen buildings on television. Right. So mm -hmm. he parks in the garage underneath um, 
our uh, our building without he, incident. Without incident, he like finds his way to the floor, and I could see that he was intimidated by this entire process. Yeah, it's a, it's a very very nice facility. It is, but also it's it's the real world, right? It's right. the real world. You're not next to like a red hot and blue slinging uh, computer mm -hmm. chips. Right. Um, so. <laughs> So, uh, Sorry, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> no, All right, go I'm ahead. Saying. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I we we negotiate some sort of like offer in my mind, like real time. We are busy. We're moving. I said, okay, we need you. This is what I need you. Throw in your two weeks. Here you go. I said, but before you de you decide to say yes, take 24 hours to think about this. I don't want you to jump right into it because I sensed his level of of. Intimidation for well, he's very apprehension. Yeah. Nervous. He's a he was, nervous. He's a nervous. He yes. was a nervous right. man. Nervous. Yes. Um, he ghosts me <laughs> for three months. Oh my god! Wow. Yes. After you say you want to make a change, come on over yes. here. Yeah. And then he he reached he, out to me. Yeah, I didn't he recruit opened, this kid. He's the one who opened yeah. the the discussion. Was he scared? So three months later, I get a hot text. He's like, I'd like to revisit uh, the offer you made. <laughs> I don't know after three months anything can be revisited. It has to be I started again. So white hot. I picked up the phone and called him. I said, what offer? <laughs> he says. Uh, the well, offer's gone. He said, yeah. remember when, uh, when you said I should think about it? I said, yes, you never called back. I, got, I, I took the hint. You're good. And he says, well. I have to be honest with you. I was like really intimidated and scared. That's all you have to tell me is the truth. Sure. To unlock any type of. He was scared. He's like, honest. And you thought angst, he was anyway. So any that's type right. of issues. I'm very thoughtful in that manner. If you try to spin zone me, I will pounce. Sure. Or right. hang up the phone. He didn't spin mm -hmm. zone me. He was very real about the situation. And I said, dude, I get it. We all have to take this big step in life. And it is an intimidating situation. We, we like, I realize you had never been in a big building like <laughs> before. Like, it's just this. I start talking to him and all the like, like uh, bells and whistles, the security, people, yeah, yeah, people yeah. who have been in the, you know, yeah. in the in high powered yeah. finance correct, before. Correct, correct. Uh, we correct. have a clip of Charlie Birdie. Oh, you do. Uh, when, okay. when, yeah, Please. Charlie met him. This is yeah. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Uh, Mac, just quick sidebar. You're gonna have to make an impression on uh, on Charlie. Just ahead. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And remember, Mac, when you come here, hit the when you get in the little room, hit the four, and it will lift you <laughs> right. up to our facility. So how is he doing? <laughs> so I made a deal with him. I said, what is your schedule at Micro Center? He says, I'm working five days a week. I said, what are your days off? He goes, Tuesday and Thursday. I said, if you're willing to work at Micro Center and for the next four months work here on your days off, that will show me you're serious about this opportunity. Okay. So we're coming up on a fourth month, and he's been, you know, roughly. So is this on, a big announcement? Roughly that, that, on does time. He even know, does he even know this is happening? He he has. I've I've said on Thursday we'll have the talk. He said okay, so I can the, tell him now. Today, today's the day. Today's the day. So when he gets here at noon, right. because that's when he comes in. <laughs> yes, because he's got to do his doctor's appointments in the morning, stuff right. like that. Uh, right. Because he works the rest of the week. Sure. He will be. He will receive a full time offer. And I'm hoping. Do you know what's going to go through his brain when he gets the full time author? What's that? What? Offer, not author, offer, Mike. This is what's going to go through his brain. I, I, I'm, I'm flattered. I, I'm, I'm flattered, but it's a big building and big, tall. I'm not, 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 I'm yeah, this is what will happen. He'll I'm gonna wet my pants. I'm gonna wet my no, pants. No, he's not no, my... nervous anymore. He comes okay. in here. You know he's got that false confidence. Yeah, oh, he's got you a little swagger. I mean? yeah, it's like, I don't think I can like, make that. Right. Yeah, he goes and sits down at like one of the nicest offices and starts working. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, by 5 o'clock, he's, he's in a fetal position on the floor going one-way streets, wow. one-way streets. No, he's great. I wanted to mention his work ethic because... What what I and I don't know if he's just nocturnal. I have no idea. I always like asking what he's going to have for dinner because uh, when you said that, yes. I immediately thought the negative. When you said yeah. you wanted to talk about his work ethic, well, I already this is thought, what's, what's the great. Problem? We're well, gonna we're one of his issues is nocturnal. We have we we have what is a 
What is a, a, a you have an emission test? It's a, no, no, it's a, it's it's a it's a burgeoning, it's a flourishing rivalry between Pony and Mac. Yes, and I'm going to establish the between first who and Mac, Pony Boy and Mac McIntosh. So I gotta get one now. I have to get one for Mac. So you know that, uh, that the Pony needs to leave board. at five o'clock on a regular basis. That's just his thing, and I know it's medical, right. whatever. I don't know. He's always going to go eat with his friends. So, um, God bless you, Pony. Lifetime contract. Do your, do your thing. But for the first time ever, and I think this is the swagger that's coming from Mac that we remember on the show, this false crazy confidence. Yeah. So he takes over a project for Pony. And he goes, I don't understand. I'm like, oh, like the, the, this computer program for automating some of the cameras. That we Remember we were talking about an automation yeah. system? Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so he's, For this show, actually. Yeah, correct. Right. So he's like going over that stuff and he goes, I said, what do you, I, I was like, well, let, let's look at the, let's pull up some, some instructional videos. And then and he goes, why does Matt have to leave like so abruptly all the time? We're not done with our work. He says this. Wow. <laughs> he showed up in one. <laughs> Oh, oh, kiss my oh, ass. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. That's what I love like... the rivalry. I'm like, oh, like, mm-hmm. yeah. So I'm sitting there and it's, you know, everybody's still at work except for Matt. Um, and he's like, <laughs> he says, um, he goes, yeah, I just, it's like everything okay with him? <laughs> he starts asking. <laughs> Have you had contact with him, Pony? Yeah, yeah he works with him every day. He's just like, he's, uh, he's you know, they, they work together. Anything you'd like to add? Now, Hold look, on, take I your time Mac. if you want to think about it. Yeah, I love Mac. Mac is great, and it's okay. excellent having a person here who can help with technical things that we don't. I don't have to explain like all the basics correct, to correct. Mm-hmm. To, uh, to work on. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, and is he a he's a Podville dude? Yeah. Right? So yeah. I. So this is what I love. So I'm like, hey man, like everybody has their own deal and schedule. I was like, you get here at twelve, one o'clock. When you have a full time job, we'll expect you at a normal hour. Mm-hmm. And he didn't balk at that or anything because I know okay. that he works a regular full time job, so these are his right. days mm-hmm. off technically, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I get it. And he goes, uh, and he goes. So he just wouldn't let the the Pony Boy thing go. He said, "What time does Pony usually get here?" I said, "You are not going to create some sort of schism between you and Matt." Wow. You haven't even started yet, Pony. Do you get a sense that he's out to get you? No, no, not at all. And I mean the. We each have uh, things that we're better at, and there are things that he would not be able to do yeah, what without are you adequate great training. At that he that that give us some examples here. They, they are concrete. Well, first oh, and no. foremost, network the, management, network okay. administration. Yes, yes, Net- yes, yes, that, yeah, that's one. Yeah, of your he's got to learn. Mm-hmm. He's got to learn. Right. What is he great at? He is fantastic at re- uh, disassembly and repairing computers. components and yeah. computers. Yeah. Uh, that's wow. something that is it, fun to do, but I generally don't have much time for anymore because I'm usually administering other Rob, things. Rob, did you catch that little dig? Yeah. They're fun to do. I did. I did. You know what? Uh, well, he's I guess he wants to go play in the sandbox, but I've got more important things Another thing Mac is excellent at doing is apparently watching a clock. And seeing what time Pony leaves. Yeah, oh, so. yeah, there's your brother standing up for you, Pony. Yeah. There's your brother. Yeah. But I will say this. This this attitude that Mac brings, and I've not seen it because I don't encounter it. I love much. the energy. It's just it's mm-hmm. it's just he funny, right? He gained that right. from being in retail. Because he's you know, you have to be a little bit of a climber. A and clock so, watcher too. Yeah, and I'm sure it's soaked in a little bit that you know, if you know, he's gonna make some points. Yeah. All kidding aside. It's just general ball busting. Yeah. yeah. And in today, today's marketplace for work, it's a more nurturing and loving, uh, I guess, you know, environment because that's just the, what, what we have to do. And that's the, what, the, way it Candy should, asses. the way it should be. But I do like <laughs> that this young buck that remembers when we were younger and just in the back of Mike's house or in a closet, in a broom closet in, in Glover Park. Right. That he just has this like unbridled confidence. He doesn't have the job yet. He's already cracking wise or questioning. He's technically superior. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. And I'm Gosh, sitting Pony, there. It sounds like Oscar loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy I like that you don't have to like mince words with him. Okay. True. Yeah, yeah, that's the, your kind of guy. Yeah. Hey, 
It's a room full of misfits, and you've made them all into your own image. Let's be honest. Fantastic. We'll take a break, and uh, we'll come back with something else right beyond. Welcome back. I shouldn't say that. I like when you say it. You are back. You You are. Hammer back. Uh, 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 Get your financial planning on track this season with Fabric by Gerber Life's mm. quick and easy life insurance policies. Customize a quote in just 10 minutes and get coverage up to $1 million for less than a dollar a day. Enjoy a 30-day money-back guarantee and flexibility to cancel any time. Protect your family's future. Get Fabric by Gerber Life today. Today. Fabric was designed by parents for parents. To help you get a high-quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutos. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. Protect your family and do it today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash TMOS. That's meetfabric.com slash TMOS. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash TMOS. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. We were talking about the Royals before, yeah. and uh, this one gets me. Have you been aware of the latest thing? I don't remember it for any of the other Royal celebrations. This coronation bit uh, with the late arrival of uh, Prince William and his wife, Catherine mm-hmm. and their kids, they're doing this now with the royals. They're getting professional lip readers to write their tabloid stories this about this. Is this, all over my feed, and this it's also goes incredible. back to an episode of Seinfeld, does it not? Mm-hmm. Didn't didn't they do that where they hired a lip reader to know he, what was going on he, on a date? Yeah, but this is different. Than... I don't think the British tabloids were getting their ideas from Seinfeld. It's just, <laughs> Call me crazy, but I just don't think it it could happen. I mean, you know, it could be the seed of an idea that came from there because if they want to know what they're saying, it makes perfect sense. Lip reading and espionage, that's been going on for even in sports. It's been going on forever. Sure, sure. Hey there, Mr. Editor-in-Chief. Thank you very much for the sun and the Daily Mail. Uh, My name is, uh, is Jonathan, and I've been working here for 17 years. Listen, I came up with a fabulous idea that I generated after watching Who's the boss with Tony Danza? <laughs> and uh, I thought this would be a fantastic idea. No, I just think that they're doing this because the security is such that they don't get the kind the access. of access. Which one did you see? I saw the one where he is sitting in the royal carriage and they are waiting to go in. Imagine you are it's the Camilla king of uh, with Camilla. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's another one where... Camilla is busting balls on somebody, right? On Harry. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm so sick of Harry. That type of... Now, I think they're taking tremendous liberties with what was actually said uh, with the Camilla thing, as opposed to when Charles was just pissed. As I would be, you're the king of England and the family with the kids. With your kids and the grandkids haven't shown up because they got to get the kids together. Yeah, right. It was funny. It was funny to see that. The one I saw was... King Charles. And is it the Queen Consort? The Queen Consort Camilla. Okay, great. Yes. The and other woman. They're in the chariot. Or Side the, oh, I'm sorry, the whatever chariot. it's called. Uh, coach. Ben Hur is yeah. just about to lead the horses <laughs> yeah. out with a sword. Mike, what happened is they borrowed them from Laurel Raceway. <laughs> Laurel Raceway. They're in a sully. That's what those things are called, <laughs> yes. by the way. No, sulky. 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 Exactly. It's not a sully. It's a Sully was the guy that landed the plane. That's Thank right. You. So the- <laughs> Thank you. The, Rob, you're going to love it because- and this is the lip reading has actually um, become pretty uh, prominent now on uh, like NBA right. uh, the, the sidelines where you see Bad Bunny talking to Kendall Jenner and, and what. So let me start with first the Queen Consort. She's she's trying to calm down the King Charles because he's like we can never ever be on time and he That's is in the carriage. He right, is right. salty, salty, salty. He's so pissed because he's nervous and he wants to get it over. Yeah, get it over. Because sure. Because yeah. Why can we not like they're late for a date? Not right. just a can't, coronation. Like, can't we just ever be yeah. like other people? As and, he sits there with his fur coat and his crown, on. Uh, his scepter, and the <laughs> and the ones that really I think you know get my attention are when they're doing the accents. Uh huh. So. The one that I saw, somebody was doing like the King Charles voice, and then the other one 
was someone was doing the Bad Bunny voice. <laughs> And the Bad Bunny voice for it's it's like a Puerto Rican like thick accent, right? Right. Right. And and, and, and there's this big 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 deal where I'm like, are they being you know somewhat like disrespectful or off putting? And so I go and find Bad Bunny just to hear what, what he sounds yeah. like outside from him, from him sing, singing, and it's just like that. Like, oh, so they're being accurate? Yeah, they're well, being accurate. Good. They're that's being good. accurate. Mm -hmm. Mike, we what did you see? That, well, I actually they got a microphone in the carriage yeah. that actually got oh, okay. Prince Charles speaking with Camilla. And uh, she's telling him to calm down. So uh, let's go. Let's go to that clip right now. I don't understand why we can't be like other people. Why can't we just be like other people? And why can't we be on time? Oh, Charles, <laughs> there's no need to get upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now let's get into the church on time. Uh, that really didn't work. I, I, no, I, know the, I know The Crown took some liberties <laughs> yes. on Netflix. We've all watched it. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you think that he, someone, and maybe I'm wrong, but someone in his troop would have said, hey, dude, you're coming off like horrible to the world. You got to get sulking. Yeah, sulking yeah, yeah just enough of this bratty. They said he was nervous before and much more relaxed when it was all over, which I definitely got from the clips which, that I saw. Mm. When he's coming out of the church, yeah. uh, the cathedral, he's uh, the abbey. Yes. I'm so sorry I didn't call it an abbey. Mm. Uh, when he's, he's talking to the guards yeah. and he's having a, you yeah. know, when he's before, it's the nervous time, like but, I am yeah. before a show. But you take right? a quailu, dude. Yeah, but yeah, when he exactly. left it, I knew he was going to be okay when he left the abbey and did the cartwheel. Yeah, it was amazing for a man that age <laughs> it really to come was. down there and do that. It was, uh, yeah. So they're they're what they are. You know, yeah, they do their thing. But you think and, that uh, someone would have like said, "Hey, lots right. of smiles. Let's turn the page." Yeah, and don't talk. Yeah. Oh, uh, hello, Charles. Time to put on your happy pants. <laughs> Thank you. Your <laughs> happy you ermine pants. pants. Yeah. Ermine. <laughs> That's right. It's ermine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be right back with. Uh, oh, do we have the town? Coming yeah, right. the side. The side. The flip. The flip of the side. Thank you. I've spoken a dead girl's joint and I got it in my pocket. I'm smoking it now. It's my dead girl's making me be real happy. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Let's talk about dead girls. The perfect afternoon reset for those feeling burnt out. Anyway, I'll stop. Uh, legal organic smokable hemp is what we're talking about. Dad grass, everybody. Organic smokable hemp relaxes your body, mellows your mind. Dad grass offers 100% organic pre rolled joints that are very low in THC and high in CBD. They allow you to enjoy the effects while keeping a clear head, but if you prefer the toke without the smoke, try Dad Grass's CBD tincture made with the same high quality hemp. All Dad Grass products leave you in a euphoric mood so you'll be able to relax and unwind. No time at all. So do yourself a favor. Snag five minutes for a dad grass toke break. You deserve it. All dad grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, dad grass is offering TMOS listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS. Go to dadgrass.com slash TMOS for 20% off your first order. Remember, man, that's dadgrass.com slash TMOS. And we thank you, Dad Grass. The flip side. So a lady was on TikTok complaining that there was a reference to the song Baby Got Back on her Amazon packaging oh. and that her kid didn't recognize it. And she felt really out of touch. Mm. The video itself wasn't that entertaining, but one of the response videos was they should have said, just go up to your son and say, hey, Alexa, what about Baby Got Back? I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. When that girl walks in with the itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. So fellas, fellas, has your girlfriend got the butt? Tell them to shake it, shake it, shake that healthy butt. Baby got back. I love. Baby got back. Yes. The pleasure of uh, seeing Sir Mix-a-Lot at a Charm City New Year's event. Uh, 
when I was younger. <laughs> wow. And, <laughs> W-H-M-A. Yeah. Yes. Did anybody get sprung? I bet they did. I bet they did, I too. I bet they wow. did. Hey, Becky, <laughs> look at her butt. Hey, uh, Becky. Look at her butt. It is so big. And that guy over there got sprung. <laughs> Mike, this is not so a segue. Nasty. I hate that term. I, I want to talk why. about the Atlanta boot girls. Oh, really? What's that? Yeah, it's not related to what we just played. Okay. These are women that put on masks and have the technology to remove parking boots off of cars after your car has been this, booted. I don't know about this. And they have sort of a viral ad campaign where they can come and get the boot off your car and rescue How do your they car. know how to do it? Do they have like- uh, They have the technology. The tools? They have the tools. Mm. But this is them on their website being approached by parking enforcement, and it did not go well. You can't do it. You can't, um, you can't, can't do it, man. You're finna step no. on her foot. I'm not stepping on hey, your foot. You can't hey, do it. you need nope. to go, like, for real, for real. Nope, you can't do this. this you're mad. Nope, you, no. you cannot take this off, ma'am. Who's mad? Okay. Nope. It's legal, like, it's not. It's yes not. it is. It's not legal. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Hurry up, we are gonna go. The boot girls. <laughs> so they just do it randomly to, or people they people know, they find them, uh, they find them like online, and they come out and they deboot the car. You know what, the, I, I look, I understand you park in a bad place, that's fine, but you know what, the parking boot has always seemed yeah. so draconian to me. Yeah. It seems so completely- Scratches the rim. Completely, it's just. It, what do you do? It, yeah. It's embarrassing. Also like, it's like the, how yeah. we are less free. Yeah, don't you know? don't they have enough, Mike? Doesn't I, the city have? Enough? I remember free as a sight. youth. I, I remember you, as a youth there was an urban legend. I don't know if it's true that if you deflate your tire, the boot falls off. Then you can put no. on a spare and get out of there. No, because it's on the rim. I've never had a boot, but I've been with friends that have been booted. Yes, <laughs> and, I've been booted. And, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Right. In in the in Manassas? Uh no, back in uh where the hell was I? New York. You know, oh. in, in Manassas they use a cowboy boot. <laughs> Wait a minute, where was I booted? It wasn't New York. Yeah, because it just seems like Yeah, you it didn't have you didn't DC. have a car in New York. I can see it you getting a, a handful no, not that New York parking the tickets in... pre you New York. Oh, I'm okay. older than you remember. Well I, yeah, uh, but I but uh no, because I got my uh my my broadcast license in Harlem mm -hmm. and I spent some time in New York. I thought it was at no, it was DC. Something so DC they'll easy. boot you. Yeah, I don't right, regular, of I've seen you walk out of a bar, yeah. or you walk out of a club when you yeah. make when you forget to pay your tickets. Which before. is strange because I didn't go to a lot of bars. <laughs> so Mike got booted outside of the National Cathedral. Getting a boot <laughs> is worse than actually getting because a boot will keep your car on the weekend for oh. four days. Yeah, yeah. four, it's it's four so, days. It's so over the top. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You That's know, why we're Mike... going to lock down your car. What if you have an emergency? What if something? Mm. I hate the idea of the boot. If you have an emergency, I call I the boot girls. Enforcement. I hate parking enforcement. Yeah, but if you anyway. could tweet the boot girls now, they'll come. Yeah, in come on box out. Your they sound yeah. nice. Yeah, they are. <laughs> 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 Let's close with this. Yes. Uh, did you know that killer whales can mimic human voice? Oh, I had man. no idea. Really? This is kind of weird. What you're going to hear first is people Excited talking and then the whale talking. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Weird. Can you the, play it again? Please? Yeah, of course. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. The third voice there was Brendan Fraser. That's very the whale. Hey, I, I get it. I get that That's joke. Oh my god, that's fantastic. We got to get out of here. Uh, hey, great bonus show this week. Yes, and, uh, we will uh, Game time. ask you kindly to uh, join us for it. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Stay safe, everybody. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Michael Mara. Radio Entertainment. That's it. That's all you got for me up here, you candy-ass clown. Come on, bitch. We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? Why don't you love me?